Hi everyone, this is Carol Keller, Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator. We are going to do a home decor item today, something a little different instead of a card or a scrapbook page. This is something that I made last year for the first time and sold a few at a craft fair, so I'm actually, this is a way for me to actually kind of stockpile for next year since there's no craft fair this fall. So I will uh, turn my camera over. All right. So, first thing I'm going to do is show you what we're going to make today. And I'm going to turn it sideways so you can see it. But this is the top. This is a tissue box holder. So, for your boutique style tissues. So, this is the kind of the look we're going for. So, I did that one. And I did this one. And it doesn't actually have a uh, label yet, but we're going to actually work on that today. And the ones I did last year had the same all the way around, but this time I did different ones just so that you could get an idea of what the papers look like. And this was the other one that I did. So obviously you can turn it anyway. You don't have to have the label showing. You don't even have to have a label, but that is the idea. And this is the one, one of the ones that I did last year with the Magnolia paper because I wanted you to see that it's not just for Christmas even though I showed you Christmas on the other designs you can do see and they're the same all the way around you can do something for year round and I also wanted to show you the different font these two that I did I used the actually the same or no I used different card or uh, stamp sets with for this one I'm gonna show you I used beautiful moments because there's a U and then it says you're somebody's blessing so we're going to use part of that with our markers I will show you and for this one I use the make a difference alphabet stamp set and my stamparatus so we're going to pull that out actually today too so I am going to move these out of the way so we can get started and the one that I did for today also uses different uh, non Christmas paper because like I said, I wanted it to be for year round. So we are using the Whale of a Time paper. So I did some cutting to start, but we're going to use the Stamparatus today. We're going to use the Stamp and Cut and Emboss. And the first thing I'm going to do is show you how to cut your cardstock. Cut one inch off on each side because we need it to be. 10 by seven and a half and so I'm just using the one inch mark here because I know that's what I need and then we will have our dimension for the sides and bottom of the box and then I'm going to show you where we need to score it so at the on the seven and a half inch side we're going to score it at five and one eighth inches so right here five and one eighth. Now we're going to come in with the scoring blade and then for the 10 inch side we're going to score it at four and three quarter inches on one end and at um, half inch and I'm going to do it on the other end so because it's only a half inch I'm going to use this side. And that's going to get us where we need to be. So that's all you need to do is score. And like I said, you need two pieces. So what you want is for the, um, the half inch side to be scored on the same edge of both of them. So if it's scored here, it's got to be scored here. So I'm just going to start with that half inch. And I'll show you how they line up and why that's important. And then four and three quarters on the other side. And then on this one, five and an eighth. All right. <clears throat> I'm going to pull this out of the way for now. We may need that again in a moment. And let's see. For the next part, we're going to do a little bit of cutting because we're going to pretty it up just a little bit. You have to cut off the part on the bottom where it's from the score line 
and then all the way down. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a score line right there. And we're actually going to cut it just a little bit in and angle it just on the left side of that score line because then it's going to look nicer and fold in better. So you can see that's not straight. It's diagonal a little bit, but that's what we want. And then the same thing, there's a score line right there and we're going to cut going from each end on the diagonal towards that center point. Just like this. Get that out of the way and then do the same thing on this end. So it's just a little bit. It will just help when we're folding it in um, to make sure we don't have any edges showing so it'll look a little nicer. All right, so now we've got basically our side panels. So what we're gonna do next is put the paper on them now uh, because that's easier. Right, and I already cut most of them. I'm gonna cut one to show you. But again, I'm using different paper. Which way does it go? Yeah, it goes that way. So I'm gonna line them up because I cut a strip. I did this again differently from last year. Last year I just cut one piece of pattern paper and left this blank, but my friend and fellow demonstrator Sandra Roberts had made some and she used the strip on the top too and I thought that looked even nicer. So case, copy and share everything, I did that. So I basically cut down each piece of paper to the size that I needed so that they'll line up. So I'm gonna move those aside and show you with the fourth one how I cut it. And then we will assemble. So now for this piece, we need it at four and a half inches wide. Yes, four and a half inches wide. Measure twice, cut once. I made mistakes last time. And then we need a strip on the top. We're gonna to take off the top only three quarters of an inch. That's all we need for that strip. So I'm gonna measure it on the right hand side and cut that off. And then we need the next piece to be three and seven eighths, but I'm gonna turn it this way so that that top is still gonna match. I hope that makes sense. So three and seven eighths is right here. Oops, that's the scoring blade. And we'll take that out of the way. And then we're just gonna assemble and we're just gonna start assembling. So all you're gonna do, and again, I'm paying attention, there's a score line right here that you probably can't see, and one down here and one over here. So I'm just gonna center it on those three sides because this part is going to be covered by the top of the box. So I'm just gonna use my stamp and seal. Put that on there. No, oh, no, why isn't it working? I feel it there. There it goes. There it goes. So we'll put some stamp and seal adhesive and then make sure those turtles are going the right way. And again, I'm just lining it up with an even edge all the way around. So I've got the first one in and then I'm going to save the panel or the top one goes on the lid. So I'm going to put that aside. And we're gonna do another one. And just put one on each of the four sides. And it's just easier to do it now. When I did these initially, I put these on at the end after the box was assembled, but it's just hard to press it really tight enough so that it is really gonna stay on there. So it's much easier and better to do it this way. So again, I'm kind of lining them up with this one and with the three sides. And now we're gonna to start to assemble our box. So the reason that you need the flaps on the same side is because they're gonna go on opposite sides of the box. So, and for this, I'm gonna use my Stamp and Seal Plus because my Stamp and Seal is very strong, but I wanna make extra sure that it's strong and this is even stronger. So I'm gonna use this and put it down on that side. And all you have to do is overlap 
I'm going to stand up so I can make sure I see it. You're going to overlap it right to the edge of your crease line or your, where you scored it. So that's all lined up. So now you can kind of start to see it's looking box-like. And to do the other side, all I'm going to do is fold the two flaps in and put adhesive there so they'll be lined up perfectly as well. That is the easiest way to do it. So I'm going to turn it so I can see it better though. Put some Seal Plus on there and just lay it right down and it's going to line right up for me perfectly. All right, and then for the bottom, I'm just going to fold them in a little bit. So it'll be easier to work with. And then we're going to fold in two sides this way and two that overlap this way. And then we're actually going to cover them up as well. So for the two outside sides, I'm putting some more Seal Plus, a couple of strips on the inside, and I will show you in a sec, one is on the very edge, and then one toward the inside, and probably you could just do it with the one on the edge, but this makes it extra sure that it's going to stay together, and for this, you do want to be careful how you line it up a little bit, because you can see it's a little off. So you want to make sure that you have it pretty centered, one on each side, and then do the same thing on here. And that looks pretty good. Let's see here. And then you can turn it inside and just press it down a little bit. And we're actually going to cover this. You don't need to, but if we do, it will reinforce it a little more. And the way we're going to do that is I have a scrap that I cut. Oh, because I, I should show you this too. For the top, we need a piece that is 6 and 7 eighths by 6 and 7 eighths. So when I took my 8 and a half by 11 and cut it down, there was a scrap left on the side and I used that for the bottom. So it won't cover it completely. One side, you're gonna cut it, um, you're gonna take your scrap, which was probably, let's see, I can tell you how wide it is. It's gonna be four and an eighth. And then I cut it at four and three quarters the other way. And it looks like on this one, it's a little bit short, or a little bit long, I should say. Oh no, that's pretty good. And I'm going to use it the long side to cover where it overlaps. I am going to cut that just a smidge. It looks like on this one, for whatever reason, it's a smidge too long. I'm just going to cut it down so it fits better on there. And it just finishes it a little bit more and it offers more um, strength to the box. And then I'll show you what I did with the top in just a minute, but we'll put this on so we can move that aside. And again, you can use your seal or your seal plus. It doesn't matter. But I like the fact that the bottom is really reinforced. I have seen several designs, different designs of these tissue box holders, and some of them don't even have a bottom. They just slip over the top. But I didn't like those as much. I like the fact that you can sit that tissue box right in there and it's going to be nice and strong. So that already is the bottom of the box. For the top, I'm going to bring my trimmer back in. Like I said, it's cut at 6 and 7 eighths by 6 and 7 eighths. And then what you need to do next is score it at 1 inch all the way around. And the top's a little bit trickier because it's going to involve a couple of steps. And like I said, we're going to use the stamp and cut and emboss, all sorts of good things. And side number four. But you can see how easily the bottom of the box comes together. So that is a good thing. So next what we're going to do 
is we're going to cut two two we're going to cut up to the um the, the score line here we're going to cut up on two sides so one side and then the opposite so we cut both of those turn it 180 degrees and cut again and those are going to create the top of the box which I'll show you in a minute but the next thing we need to do is cut out ovals for the top so we need a line a piece of paper that's going to go underneath in a contrasting color and in this case it's going to be white whisper white and then so we have to cut them separately and the way I did it we needed um, a piece that's four and a half by four and a half for the white at the most so in this case I did use another scrap so you're gonna see that it's actually it's not quite that wide and it doesn't matter it's four and a half this way but it's not as wide this way and it doesn't matter as long as we center it in there that won't matter but you need a piece that's no larger than four and a half by four and a half and you can either measure to find the center and then kind of eyeball where your um, oval is so I use the layering oval set or in my case because I was making a bunch of them I used a template and that actually has double duty I'm going to use it on the Stamparatus as well and so I will show you that in just a sec um, that's all you do is make sure it's centered so that it's easy then to layer on in a minute and then I'm going to show you how we cut this one to get it into the stamp and cut and emboss it's too wide right now so I'm gonna fold it on two of the edges so that it fits and then I did the same thing I actually created a template and again you can either measure to find the center and then center your oval there or if it's easier you can do what I did and just make a template same thing it's a little tiny bit smaller than where the score lines are but I know by looking at it I can set it um, exactly in the center and then I'm gonna pull out my washi tape that one's pretty tucked in but I think one will probably do and I'm centering it so I know that it's gonna be in the center of the top of the box and I'm gonna pull in my machine and then just run it through so you can see how it works so again I'm going to fold these in but you can see that they're um, the cutting surface is not going to bother those edges so that will be fine and I need to take off my top all right so I've got my top cutting plate and I'm just going to sit it in there and run it through and I know that will be lined up just where I want it and then the best part is that we're going to use that scrap for the front so I've run it through and I've got my my top all ready to go but then this piece is going to be part of our label on the front and actually the same thing with this one when I cut it I saved the center piece here and you can use that as the label so you don't need to cut separate pieces we're basically just using the scraps so we will do that in a minute I'm gonna put that aside again so for now before again before we assemble we're gonna put the pattern paper on but this time I want to make sure I follow the um, same pattern so that they match up so you do want to make sure you do that so this one is the one that goes up here so I'm grabbing my stamp and seal and we're gonna lay this again just centering it as best we can and then now I want the turtles so I'm gonna turn and find that strip which is this one and layer it here so that way when I put the top on they're all going to match up and you will see you've got a little bit of extra um, 
on the sides than you do on the top and bottom. It's not completely centered and that's because the top of the box is slightly larger than the bottom so that it fits on top. Okay, so we've got our top and now we're just going to, and you want to make sure you find the right score marks and just bend them because that will help when you're adhering and these two sides are already done. So we do these two side or these three pieces. And then all you have to do is you're going to tuck it in and it'll be hidden. And actually I did the same thing on this. I forgot that step. Is I cut them, I trim them down just a little bit so that they're a little to be assured that they're more hidden. So the easiest thing to do is put your stamp and seal on while it's flat. And again, I'm using the Seal Plus because it's nice and strong. And I want to make sure. And I this, this container reminds me of our old Fast Fuse. And when I used that, when we used that back in the day, we had to do a little check mark at the end. Well, when I was doing it that with this one, it was pulling it off the roll. All you have to do is pull it straight up. And it comes right off and it keeps rolling. So little tip for how to use the Seal Plus. And so then that's it. We're just going to line everything up. Going to stand up again here. So that those corners are nice and square. And there's the top. So we just find, here are the turtles. And if I did this right, they all line up. Okay, so there is basically the base of the box, but we are going to also put in the liner. I could have done that before or after, it doesn't matter. But for this, this is going to go inside and line it just to give it, you know, again, more of a finished look. And I'm going to grab my Seal Plus again. And for this, it really is easier to do it before I get to this step, but that's okay. I am going to show you how I lined it up. You want to just get it centered before you press it completely. Hang on. So yeah, it's easier to do this before you fold up the corners, obviously, but it's still doable. It's also easier to use your multi-purpose liquid glue instead of the stamp and seal if you forget to put it in first. And then press it. Now it's a little off, but not too bad. And it doesn't matter if it's off underneath. It's a little crooked underneath, but as long as it's lined up on the top, then you're good to go. And that's your that's your top. And I forgot to say, too, if there's a certain side that you want to show, you want to make sure that you cut the oval. Well, I guess it doesn't matter You can because you can have the oval that way or this way on your counter. So it really doesn't matter. And having different papers on each side, which actually now they're not lined up, let's fix that. Um, different ones on each side, you can change it up. So you can have one towards the front and then change it if you want to periodically. Or like I said, you can use all of the same paper all the way around. Doesn't matter, it's just personal preference. And so now the last thing is the label. So for the label, again, I'm using my scrap that I cut out from the top. And from, I'll use this one, from the inside. And I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to do the bless you on the front. So I used, one way was to use, like I said, the, um, it was the beautiful moment stamp set because there's a U, the word U, and the word blessing that we're going to use our marker on. And we're going to use our marker on both. So I'm using Pretty Peacock to match. And I have both of the stamps set up. All you need to do is take the brush end of your marker and I just eyeballed it. So I can see the S goes right to there. And I'm kind of working my way backwards just to get that word bless. And then I'm gonna stamp it right about here. Okay, a little light, but not too bad. And then the U 
is a little bit easier because it's just the bottom part of the stamp. And then turn that around and I centered it a little bit this way. And that's it. So that's one way to do it. And we layer it and put it on the box. You can use dimensionals or not. But before we do that, because I probably will restamp that to make it a little darker, so I'm not going to put that one on. But I also, anyway, wanted to show you another way to do it. So I am going to bring in my Stamparatus for that. Because for this one, the other thing that you can do is we have an alphabet stamp set that works, the Make a Difference set. When I used, when I made the ones that I made last year, because I used all the uppercase letters, and I just want, oh, here it is. I just wanted to show you that. So I used all the uppercase letters to do bless you, and I used the Stamparatus I, for the bless, and I used the U from another set. I don't remember which one, but the uppercase bless. This time I thought, now I want to use a mix of uppercase and lowercase, and because the letters, they really look like, almost like cursive writing, so you really want to have them be butted up against each other, and so it makes one word all together that flows. And the easiest way is to use the Stamparatus, especially if you're doing more than one, which I plan to do. Like I said, I plan to make these to sell at a craft fair next year. So I want to do, I don't want to have to um, stamp each one separately every time. So I'm going to bring in the Stamparatus and I do have it already set up and I'm going to show you what I did. To get it ready so the it's easiest to put the stamp set underneath to hold the plate so it's good to do that and I don't have enough room to do the other one but it won't matter and what you need to do first is have scrap paper in here this is actually the template that I used, and you can see it's got a little bit of ink on it now it's the template that I used to cut out that oval that went in the top. So I knew what size and how to center it. And then, but it works because then I can put my oval right back in there and I know it's gonna be right where I want it to be able to um, have the stamps be lined up where I want them. So, but you start off with a scrap paper, you don't use your oval, you put a scrap paper in there and all I did was layer, you do the B first, and stamp it to see where it is. Then I put the L, and I'm not gonna do it because I don't wanna mess the letters up, but you put the L, you have your B that you stamped on your scrap paper, and you lay the L stamp right next to it until it's aligned where you want it, and then you pick it up with your Stamparatus, and then you stamp it to make sure, is it where I want it? Sometimes they're not, and you can readjust. You just need new pieces of scrap paper. So I usually have a lot of scraps around. I used an envelope actually to do it today, an envelope that I was gonna recycle anyway. And you do it until you have everything lined up the way you want it. So that whole word, both words, bless you, are lined up and the way you want it. So I did do that earlier, like I said, because I knew it was gonna take a long time. So now I've got the one I'm gonna use on the tissue box. And I'm just gonna bring in my pretty peacock ink to match. and stamp, or I mean ink both of the sides with the stamps on them. And then it doesn't matter which one you do first because they're all lined up, but I'm gonna, and don't worry about the stray ink. It's gonna get on the magnets. So you do wanna be careful when you pick up the magnets because you'll get ink on yourself if you're not aware. And then, and it did pop out a little bit. I was gonna do this too. Actually, I noticed that before. But the problem is you don't want to put the magnets too close together because if they attract each other, they're going to break. So you want to be really careful about where you place them. And we'll put a little more ink on this side, just in case. And then you'll see it fill in. And look at that. Bless you. So again, if you're not happy with the placement, make sure you are before you go to your um, kind of your final product. And for one I did earlier, I actually had stray ink. I'm gonna bring it in. I had stray ink here, 
So if that happens, don't worry. All I'm going to do is ink the edges of that one. And that one's going to have inked edges. You can do it anyway, but if you don't want to, that's all right too. For this one, I'm not going to. I'm going to take the Stamparatus out of the way. Love that tool. And now it's just a matter of, um, I'm going to close my ink pad so we don't want any accidents. And it's just a matter of layering and putting it on the, whoops, putting it on the box. So our final steps. And you could embellish even more like the, um, the one with the flowers. You could, you could die cut a flower and put it on there too. You could put, I thought about maybe even putting some hearts or something um, on here. But I thought for today we would keep it a little simple because this is a lot longer than my lives normally are. And I'm just going to put it on with my seal plus. I'm not going to use dimensionals, but you could. And then I'm going to use the side that's a little less embellished. Looks like a good spot for that. And press it in there. And our box is complete. What do you think, ladies? Not too bad. Not too um, difficult. Just kind of a lot of little steps. But there you go. You can make a tissue box for Christmas gifts. But thanks for joining me today. Have a great day and a great week, everyone. Bye-bye.